Electronics is a fascinating field. From that vintage and retro stuff to the latest in technology, it certainly brought us a lot of exciting new gadgets and computers of all kinds, and in many cases made our lives easier. And if you're just getting into the field of electronics, you might be picking up everything you find like that old TV by the side of the road and accepting all kinds of old broken devices from friends and family members and even picking old stuff up from the thrift store. Fixing and purchasing components can get expensive and there's always that waiting period before you receive them which holds up your project. So it's good to keep a certain inventory on hand and if you're anything like me and worry about throwing anything out, even if you know it'll never be fixed, the last thing you want is to end up with a mountain of garbage in your house and have your spouse threaten divorce over it. A solution is to open them up and salvage what you can. Opening up old electronics and seeing how it was put together is very educational and for those unfixable units you can definitely recover some hard to find and expensive parts. But you might also be wondering what, if anything, should you keep from those old components? Of course you'll need your soldering iron. Any will do, even those cheap 10 to $15 ones. You can use your desoldering pump, but since these are boards we're salvaging from and not repairing, you don't need to be neat. For anything with two to three legs, you can simply melt new solder on and then, while heating the solder joints, pull the components out from the other side. For those harder areas and double-sided boards, you can also use the soldering wick. In general, I would not recommend keeping any of the old capacitors as they have an expected life of 15 to 20 years and also they could have high ESR or resistance that is not visible and in the end, blowing something you're repairing. Unless they are fairly new or large and expensive and you want to test them one by one, I would suggest purchasing new high quality caps from respected distributors. I also would not recover any surface mount stuff. All those parts are tiny and break easily. Resistors are also not worth it because most of the time the legs will have been cut too short to reuse and you can buy them for a dime a dozen so you won't be saving any money there. The same goes for most of those tiny transistors that are in what is called a TO92 package. Unless of course it's really rare and can no longer be found. However, most often it's easy to find an equivalent. A good place to start is a website like alltransistors.com. You can also download NTE's cross-reference software for both desktop and smartphones completely free. So finally, what parts are good to salvage? Well, different types of connectors like BNC, audio jacks and even power cords are definitely worth keeping. Coils and relays of all kinds are also worth it since they can get pretty expensive and these are parts that are more difficult to buy in bulk and to keep on hand to have available anytime you need them. Heat sinks can get very expensive and it's always good to have a bunch of different sizes and shapes available. Voltage regulators and other types of transistors that are in a TO220 package also get expensive and could be harder to find. You can easily look up what they are online through vendors like DigiKey or Mauser or through the all transistors or NTE cross-reference I previously noted. You can easily test those transistors with a multimeter and keep them. Other things that you could keep are motors, fans, switches and some variable resistors if they are in good shape. I would also keep all the knobs and buttons. Transformers are quite expensive and hard to find, so if it's still giving out voltage, I would definitely keep it. And last but not least, screws, screws, and more screws. You can never have enough, and most of the time, these are not your typical big box store screws. Of course, if you see anything else that's not on this list, and it looks rare or expensive, then take it out and keep it. At the end, all the salvaging might not save you enough to buy a new home, but it does save quite a bit as it adds up and will save you time when you just want to fix something quick. Plus, it'll make it easier for you to dispose of the remaining plastic parts in your recycling bin and save your marriage. All in a good day's work. See you soon. Bye-bye.